we're going to look at something that's going to give your PC a case of the zoomies. The Western Digital SN580 NVMe SSD. So, Progenix sent me this little guy and they were like, it's super fast, it'll make your life better and you'll get all the women throwing their panties at you, bro. And say for one of those things, they're not wrong. This is what's considered a budget NVMe, but don't let that deter you. This little guy means business. In the box, you get an NVMe and that's pretty much it. No screw to hold it down, no heatsink, but that's okay because this little guy doesn't get too hot unless you're reading and writing to it for prolonged periods of time. And most motherboards nowadays come with a heatsink and a screw at the very least anyway. Now looking at the NVMe itself, you can see it's fairly basic. You have a controller, and you have the NAND flash all on one side, which helps with laptops with limited space. And this brings us to the Achilles heel. It has no DRAM cache, but, but before you get your panties in a knot, it does come with a 200 megabytes host memory buffer, which is whatever megabytes more than most DRAMless NVMEs out there. I think 64 is the standard for DRAMless SSDs. What this means is that the data map of what is located where on the drive, like where you keep your weird waifu pics and where your resume is stored on the NAND flash, is then copied over to your system memory, being your RAM on boot for faster access, instead of being stored on the drive's DRAM, which this obviously doesn't have. So there's that, which at the end of the day, leaves some extra cash in your pocket to spoil your girlfriend. I'm so lonely. NVMEs. They are awesome. But is this one? Let's find out. For this test, I'm dropping the NVMe into a dull XPS 15 9530. It's got an Intel 13700H, an RTX 4060, and 64 gigs of RAM, but most importantly, it's PCIe Gen 4. A caveat is that the XPS line of laptops are notoriously hot running and often hit 100 degrees Celsius, throttling themselves silly. So this will definitely affect the overall scores you're about to see, but I wanted a real world scenario in this review. I'm keen to try some phase sheet PTM on this laptop's CPU and GPU. Let me know in the comments if you think it'll make any difference. Installation, pretty straightforward. Pop it in the M.2 slot, screw it down. Previously on Just John. And now, yeah, you were expecting me to f it up again, weren't you? But I got screwing lessons from your mom. Now, I'm not going to bore you with much technical jargon. If you want all the nitty gritty details, you can check out the specs on Western Digital's website. But basically, it's fast. Fast enough for 99% of you out there, including me. So let's talk numbers. The SN580 is a PCI Express Gen 4 drive, which boasts sequential read and write speeds of up to 4140, 4150 megabytes a second. It comes in four variants, 256, 512, one terabyte, which we have here today, and a two terabyte model, each packing a lacquer five year warranty or terabytes written, whichever comes first. It's kind of like a car mileage or yearly so for the 250 gig you get 150 terabytes written for the 500 you get 300 terabytes written for the one terabyte you get 600 terabytes written and for the two terabytes weirdly you only get 900 terabytes written but let's be honest you could write 80 gigs a day to this one terabyte drive and it would still take you 20 years or so to get to 600 terabytes Impressive, certainly, but how does it translate to real world performance? Now, whilst you can use this as a main boot drive, especially if it's a gaming PC, web browsing, light workloads, YouTube, etc., the real best use case for this type of SSD is actually as a secondary data drive or storage drive. That means it's perfect for a game drive. Lots of small and large files, and what I wanna test for it too is whether it can work as a production drive for editing 4K 10-bit 422 footage. But first, let's check out some benchmarks, starting with PC Mark 10. So the SN580's host memory buffer delivered decent, though not spectacular speeds at around 400 to 420 megs a second. That's pushing it hard with a synthetic benchmark. You'd see closer to 600 megabytes a second in a desktop with faster DDR5. Power-wise, it's efficient, staying cool under load, though I did see a peak of around 67C during the PC mark test. 
which might cause a touch of throttling. Crystal disc mark confirm the advertised speeds, what's written on the tin is what you're getting. And a sustained 45 gig file transfer showed a little throttling, but this was almost guaranteed to be the laptop's limitation, holding it back from its full potential. Expect around 3.5 gigabytes a second with a beefier setup. It's worth noting that all components are WD made, so promising consistent performance, no mixy matchy nonsense here. Games? Well, they load in seconds. In 3D Mark, it got a higher score than average with the same type of setup, and it even outperformed the separate rocket in my workstation PC. I can actually like play the game, and good lord, the dreaded building shaders time will be significantly cut down, if, especially if you're coming from a spinner drive. Just a heads up though, PS5 users, you're sh out of luck. The PS5 is a bit of a snob and it needs DRAM cache or GTFO. Now, when it comes to video editing, I edited this entire video on this laptop with this drive using 4K 10-bit 422 files. And the only thing caused me to drop frames was when I added a LUT to the adjustment layer, which stressed the CPU out. The drive itself didn't break a sweat. Of course, it's not gonna magically make you a better gamer or a content creator god, but what it will do is make your computer feel snappier, more responsive, and more enjoyable to use. And that's worth something. It's one of those things where over time, you won't even notice it anymore because it's doing its job so well. So yeah, the Western Digital SN580. Solid SSD, great price, makes your PC feel like something new and shiny. What's not to love? Thanks again to Progenix for supplying this sample for us to look at. And you can find a link down below to these, this drive on their website. Leave any questions or comments down below. Please subscribe, comment, and all that YouTube stuff. Thank you kindly. Okay, thanks, bye.